Hey guys, I found a really interesting U-lock the other day. It's called a Leica lock. And uh, it has an interesting mechanism here in that it has two cores. They're both dimple cores. And then you can see from the key, uh, one side has four cuts and the other side has five. Uh, if you can make that out, that's a, just a really high cut there. So, uh, yeah, it's a double-sided dimple lock. Different bidding on both uh, sides there. So, uh, there's one thing about this lock that confuses me, though. Uh, well, I guess it doesn't confuse me. I'm just kind of wonder why they chose to do that. It's that this lock, I mean, this core here, A, has a open and locked position and then an arrow you know it's like a sequence to go to B and uh, you'll notice that the A core only has one set of pins so that only uses one side of the key but the B side uses both sides of the key two pin stacks there so if I try to open B out of order let's say I just ignore A and I just want to go to B I'll try to turn it and it won't open See, won't open. B, that's because A is in the locked position. So what I need to do is uh, turn A to the open position. Then I can go to B and then open B like that. So uh, although that's interesting, the thing that made me like a little bit perplexed is that this, if this used a different key, I could understand that because that would be kind of like a manager's key like or, or s someone else would need to be there for you to open this lock because you have you, two keys are needed. But for this lock, you know, you could use the same key. So, uh, yeah, it's more or less just another lock. So it's just two locks. Um, so uh, I guess it adds a, a little bit more security because now you have to pick two cores but uh, yeah I mean it could still be done though and that's something I want to try to demonstrate for you in the next section so let me just get my picks and we'll try to pick this open okay so I've been doing a lot of dimple lock picking recently uh, partly because I've been uh, wanting to use my new dimple uh, rakes and flags uh, these flags are pretty cool, uh, really comfortable handles, kind of cool colors. Uh, I like it better than the Goso set. So uh, if, if you like these, just go ahead and send me an email and I'll see what I can do about uh, getting some more of those. Um, but for now, let's just um, move these out of the way and I'll demonstrate how to use some of these tools to pick this lock since it is a dimple lock. Um, so remember, if we just go to B here. B is not going to open because that's out of sequence. We need to pick A first and then B. So um, I'm going to try to go ahead and get tension here. Remember A, we have to pick it counterclockwise like this. In fact, I'm going to, I think this is more comfortable and easier to see for everyone. I'm going to be using this orange flag for now. Right, okay. I just want to make sure that there's a good position for the camera. Picking a U-lock on the table is odd, and let me tell you, the shackle is big, and you just keep knocking it around, so um, let me just start at the top, and then I'm going to go to the back, and I'm going to go front to back, back to front, just seeing what binds as we do for a normal lock because this does not have any security pins, okay? So as long as you're calm and methodical about this, you should be able to get it. Um, this tension grip that I'm using is not ideal. I'm just trying to keep it clear for you guys. There you go, pin three, okay. There you go, oh, I almost have this because there you go okay I thought I had it it moved and then it stopped there you go a is open now 
So B is next. And, uh, you know, I have single pin pick this lock, but I want to keep the video kind of more respectable length here. So, and I also give you, me a chance to demonstrate the use of these dimple rakes because they're kind of cool. Let me grab one for you. Okay, one sec. I'll use this one. Um, it looks like it has three half diamonds on there, right, in succession. And this is cool because you could stick this in here on this side and pick this uh, the pins which are in like the center channel. So I'm going to stick this in here, and I'm just going to rake back and forth against these top pins. And, uh, you know, this B cylinder has more spring tension on it than A, so the feedback's not as good. And the tension has to be quite hard, otherwise you won't open the lock. Uh, so I can't be sure that I've hit everything on the top. I'm just going to trust that I did. And if I need to correct something, I will go back and do that. So here we go. I'm going to switch tension here. Let me zoom out. I'm going to put this tension wrench. I'm going to go ahead and grab it and then drop this one. Okay. And still trying to keep a good view for you guys. I'm going to grab my rake again and start working on the bottom pins. And you'll notice immediately that those pins are binding quite hard. And I'm going to have to work my way around them. So we're going to rake. And I'm going to have to kind of like adjust my tension as I go. Because if it's too hard, then I won't be able to push the pins down all the way. So again, I think I've made some progress. I felt a turn on the core. This pin is binding so hard I can feel that I'm just like going over it. You know, it's not even being pushed down, so. All right, so. You know, raking is random, so it's not always really fast. Something on the top might have popped loose while I was transferring the tension. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to check my work, check the top, and make sure everything is good up here. Okay, did you see that? Something popped into place when I was poking around at the top. So now that I've done that, I feel comfortable going back to the bottom to continue raking which is immediately I feel something burning. Oh, there you go. See, always go back and check your work, guys, because I had missed something at the top. There you go. The shackle comes undone. We've picked both cylinders. The Leica dual cylinder, double-sided dimple U-lock has been picked. And, you know, uh, it's not the most high security option, but it is really kind of cool and unique looking. Um, but, you know, if this was on a bike or something like that, a uh, thief wouldn't have to worry about using bolt cutters or an angle grinder or anything like that. Um, all you'd need is this in your pocket. So um, maybe spring for something a little bit more secure than this, but I'm still glad to have it in my collection as it is interesting. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.